David Frayne, the editor of Tools of the Trade. I'm at JLC Live at the Bosch booth with Craig Wilson, who's going to show us their new Reax job site table saw. Craig? Hi, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Good. Yeah, like you said, this is our Bosch Reax table saw. The model yeah. number is the GTS 1041A. Uh, this happens to be the 09 version, which includes uh, both the stand and the rear out feed support. Okay. Uh, what I want to walk you through, uh, first and foremost, is, is the basic elements of the table saw. Uh, as you know, we've had the 4100 in the market for quite some time now, yep. and been very pleased with the performance of the 4100. Mm -hmm. And what we've done is we've taken a number of those elements and components uh, from the 4100 and implemented them into this new saw. Uh, we have onboard storage for your guard system, uh, for your rip fence, uh, for blade wrenches, yep. uh, additional blade. If sure, I see the blade placed down here. Yep. Now I'm looking at the top on this, it looks roughly the same size as your 4100. What's the rip capacity on this? The rip capacity on this tool in particular is, is 25 inches and the way that you accomplish that is simply lift this lever here, which I just did, uh -huh. uh, and then you'd lock that back into place. Uh, you also can have uh, a, a smaller capacity here, all you would do is... So you've got in. two scales on here, one for when you're all the way out and one for when you're in. And we've put a lot of effort into our rip fence. Uh, we've built this rip fence off of the design of our 4100, mm -hmm. uh, the square lock rip fence that we have okay. today. Uh, of course, you'll notice a few differences The here. color, well, yeah, the outside of it looks a little different. Yeah, so first and foremost, you'll notice uh, the, the red on the top. Mm -hmm. And the red, uh, why we did that is so that people can notice that this is a different saw. They're okay. walking up to a very different saw. You'll notice a few of, uh, of the red components and those kind of yep. things are slightly different. Mm -hmm. And we did that again primarily to focus on uh, notifying the user that they're walking up to a different saw. This sure. is not a 4100. I see you've got like an outfeed on here. Yeah, so I, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but the outfeed, uh, if you'll undo the knob yeah. there, uh, this which, this uh, gives you a little bit of, of an additional support. It gives you 18 inches of additional sure, support. Sure, that, and that's a big help. Because unless you're not, people are working by themselves, everything's falling off the end of the saw. Yeah, yeah. So we want to do, uh, and we offer this as an, an attachment for our 4100 today. Okay. Uh, we decided in this case that we wanted to up feature it a little bit and add this to sure. the 09. Easy bevel control. Okay. Uh, it'll bevel anywhere between negative of two and 45 okay. uh, and then also this is uh, your your lift mm -hmm. uh, one thing that we did is we moved uh, the push stick uh, storage right up front for you um, so there's a nice little holster there where so it used to be it's like somewhere harder to get a at little or? bit more difficult on the yeah. 4100 is actually stowed on the back of the tool. yeah so okay we felt that a little bit easier you won't you won't, front you won't be, nice. be tempted not to use it if you can just reach down and grab <laughs> yeah, it we hope so yeah this does have flush detection technology okay. Uh, we call it the REACTS Acti with Active Response Technology. Okay. Uh, and what that uh, does is upon user contact with the blade, uh, uh -huh. it will retract the blade under the table with no blade damage. And how, do you have any idea how fast that is? Very, very fast. Yeah, I saw it done. I mean, it's like milliseconds, right? You, yeah, couldn't, you couldn't see it. It's very, very fast. I mean, uh -huh. it's, it's the blink of the eye. If yeah. You, if you blink, if you blink eye, really fast. If you blink, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what I'd like to do is actually kind of show you a little bit under the hood kind of how, how this, this saw functions to a certain extent. Um, okay. So once we remove this, Great. Um, it's, it's kind of the coolest feature uh, of this tool. Um, and, and we'll lift this up here. Um, and basically what you've got here is you've got a detection plate. And the detection plate okay, uh, that's is located that, is that, right Is that there. that white thing? Okay. Yeah, and so what that's doing is it's consistently talking uh, with the blade, uh -huh. uh, and it's monitoring the blade for different inputs. Okay. Uh, and those inputs are programmed to accept uh, lumber and not accept a, a person, basically. Okay. And so uh, basically what that does is it sends the signal off of the detection plate to okay. the onboard electronics. Uh, the onboard electronics uh, then evaluate th those different inputs, and if someone does touch the blade, what it's going to do is it's going to use that piston to push uh, the, the the blade away from the user and down sure. under the table with again not damaging the and blade. so the final signal that gets sent must be through this wire is this where your your yep. your pistons down in here and this is what's telling it to fire yeah and again uh, that, that piston that we talked about uh, is actually it's a very similar technology to what's used uh, in the automotive industry so we've got one here nice. and this one for example has been shot so this is this is one that has not been fired yes and yep. this one has been fired and that shot out and basically knocked the whole blade, popped the blade assembly down. Yes, it pushes the blade, the, the blade assembly down, what we call the drop arm here. Okay, and uh, I guess I'm seeing an electrical connector back here, mm -hmm. that's what 
basically runs to this wire. Yep, that wire connects to that electrical connection. Uh, and again, upon sensing that, uh, back inside of here, in this component here, uh, is basically similar technology to what's used in the automotive industry, uh, pushing that piston down. So Instead of having it a bag, it has a piston. So it's like an down. airbag. It's the airbag mechanism almost, but on a small scale. Very similar to, yes. Yeah. yeah. And so that, and you can fire each one of those once, and yes. then you've got to replace it. Yes, yep. Uh, and the nice thing about this is it can be used for standard blades and for dado sets as oh, well. Oh, cool. That's a, that is a good thing. So you, yeah. it's basically you can swap blades out and not worry about it. Yeah, you don't have to change the cartridge for the application, which is a very nice component of it as well. So ballpark, what does this thing go? What is it, one of these going to go for? We're looking for $99 retail. So basically you get two, you get 50 bucks of firing. That's that's basically what it equates Okay, that's, and that's hard to argue with what, yep. with, uh, what would the alternative be if you cut a finger or a hand? Yep. And you can imagine, uh, given the complexity of this system, uh, it can be translated into a very intuitive onboard control center here. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is definitely different than what I've seen on any yes. of your other saws. Yes, this is, uh, this is kind of the, the dashboard, if you will, okay. of the electronics. Uh, and so you'll notice here we've got the green light on. Uh, the green light is telling you that the saw is ready to go. Okay. Uh, if uh, there is a yellow light on, uh, the yellow light will tell you that it's in bypass mode okay. because when, conduct when cutting conductive type of materials that can mimic uh, the inputs of a human, uh, we, you the user can put it in bypass mode, uh -huh. deactivating the system So like somebody using foil face foam or that something would be with metal example. on it? Yep. So foil face foam would be a good one. Uh, the best example uh, would be like an aluminum face veneered plywood or something like okay. that. Okay, sure, gotcha. Um, and, then, uh, and then you've got the red. Uh, light that would come on, which is which is here. Okay. The red light is simply telling the user uh, that uh, something is incorrect that he can most likely fix. Okay. Uh, such as the cartridge would be installed incorrectly. Okay. Uh, or something along those lines. Or a, a better example would be that he left the switch on when plugging it in. If he turns the switch off, uh, then it will work for him. Uh, but that red light would come on and, and indicate to him that there's something that he could fix. So if you blew the breaker and this was on and you went and reset the breaker, then it wouldn't come back on? That's correct. Well, that's, that's good. That's what you want. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, in addition, uh, the following light uh, with a little wrench on it there, uh, that is a blue light. And a blue uh -huh. light is, a, is an unfixable error uh, by the user. He would need to take it into service. Okay. Uh, and then the service center would be able to work okay. on it and deliver that back to the user. So once you've done that, you've done all that, and then you could do the flipping on and off is just the switch down here? Yep. So this is just basically telling you what situation is, and then once it's green, you're flipping it on and you're going. Yeah, that indicates the saw status to the okay. user. Um, I mentioned that the red light can indicate a multitude of different yeah. scenarios, basically. Uh, you'll notice here that we've got a little NFC sticker with a cell phone on it. Ah. That's indicating that there will be a cell phone app okay. uh, that will be able to be downloaded uh, to help the user intuitively understand the system uh, and give him stats from the system as well. Does it con So does it connect to this, or is it just it giving? Does. Really, is there or what's in here? No, it's using NFC, which is so primarily on the Android uh, platform. Okay. Uh, NFC stands for Near Field Communication. Gotcha. So it's actually reading something on a module in here. Yeah. So what it's wow. doing is it's, it's reading that, and it would tell you, for example, how many firings you've had and those types of uh -huh. elements. Uh, again, helping the, the user understand uh, a little bit yeah. more about us. Uh, cool. Yeah. Well, great. Um, do you think we? Is there any chance we could run this uh, and and do a firing? Yeah. Let's let's uh, let's get this put back together. Okay, so Craig, you're going to show us uh, how this uh, how this works with this uh, poor hot dog here. Yeah, we've got it all set up here. Uh, okay. The hot dog is going to act as a proxy in this case. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to double check that I've got the green light yep. indicating that the saw is ready to go, mm -hmm. uh, and then I'll hold on to the hot dog again, acting as proxy. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll put my hand on here. And your hand needs to be on the hot dog because it, it needs to sense the electrical signal that a human puts out. Is yeah, that kind this of what doesn't it is? work with dead people, just okay. live people. So you have to hold the hot dog okay. again. Uh, sensing uh, me through the hot dog okay. and acting as proxy. All right, I'm going to step back. Uh, so what we'll do here is we've again got the, the green light here. We'll turn this saw on. And you can see our little hot dog, a little Del bit of sawdust. Not much. Uh, try and find a scratch here for you. I'm sure it's there somewhere. Little well, little it's scathe. yeah, it's a lot better than what happened with a finger without that absolutely, system. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, now you can see that uh, basically we've got uh, the red light indicating now. That indicating it's been tripped. That it's been tripped. So what I'll do is I'll turn the, the saw off. Yep. I'll also unplug the saw. So after I'm plugging the saw, uh, now I can, I can do the reset. Uh, and as I indicated to you before, 
Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the guard here. Okay. We'll take and remove the anti-kickback yep. bones. Uh, we will lift our blade to the most upright position. We'll take the throat plate out. All right. Uh, then we'll lower our riving knife. Okay. Once now we've lowered our riving knife. I'm going to get this out of here. We don't need this anymore. No, I think we're good with that one. So we'll take and remove our, our wrenches on the side. Okay. On the side here, I have two wrenches. Uh, one is called an activation cartridge wrench. Uh, and the activation cartridge wrench is in order to take this retainer ring off the top. Once I've loosened that, I can then take and remove this uh, retainer ring. I can pull this out of here. Okay, and that's that cartridge we've seen, and they've both been fired there. In this case, both of the cartridges have been okay. fired. What I'll do is I'll unplug this cartridge here. Um, and I'll unplug this guy here, and then what I'll do is I've got my a new cartridge. Okay. In this case, since I've shot both of them, what I want to do is actually uh, go to the storage location that I indicated okay. earlier. Uh, so right over here on this side, I've got a, a storage location okay. uh, that you can see that I pulled that so you out. So you've got spare room for spares in there. Yep, and what I'll do is I'll reach down here and unplug this guy here. Uh, and then what I can do is I can take this activation cartridge and put back in. I'll plug the activation cartridge back in. There's one way to do that. Okay. I'll push that down uh, and hold it with my, my finger on the one side uh, and then take this active, the, the retainer ring and screw the retainer ring down. Uh, once I've screwed that down, I'm going to take this and, and tighten it up Okay. about an eighth of a turn. Uh, and then what I'll do, uh, you'll notice that I'm going to take my, my blade wrench now and you'll notice that uh, the, the blade won't come up. Gotcha. Uh, unless uh, unless I, I, I release this, it's a little release. this mechanism okay. right here. All right. Uh, and the reason why we did that is we didn't want the blade to come up after we put it down. You didn't want it bouncing back through exactly. after you pulled it down. Gotcha. Exactly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that back okay. and I'm going to pop that back into place. Uh, once that's popped back into place, I'll take and put my blade guard assembly back on. Sure. I'll put my riving knife up. I'll take and put my throw plate back into place, my anti-kickback balls back into place, my blade guard. Yeah. So really at this point you're back to a regular saw. I mean yep. it's as if, you know, as if this didn't happen. Yes, exactly. Because at the end of the day, even though uh, a contractor may have had a close call, uh, at the end of the day they're, get, they're paid to get the job.